other people from the tech team, but for the training part, I'm the one who will be handling most of the trainings. So our training today is, is about uh, DHSA BSS certification, which you guys, uh, if you have been a part of the training as we began, you are, I think you are conversant where we are heading to and what we are doing. For those of us maybe who are joining us, joining us for the first time, we are doing a training for DHSA certification. So DHSA BSS is a, is a certification for video surveillance system. So, so we are we are we are doing a, a progress on the same. So we have before we have been doing trainings on from the coursework. Uh, we have done a technical basic. We have handled the camera section of it. So this these are the these are the what what our course entails. So we, are, we did an uh, introduction to CCTV system. We have done introduction to camera. Now we'll be doing a recorder. So for you to get certified, uh, uh, you will you'll need to do an exam on the same. So the exam uh, is both theory and practical. So for the practical uh, part of training, we have been doing uh, practical trainings on Saturdays. So for the past two Saturdays, we have done uh, practical training for those of us who joined us. And uh, so we'll be doing practical trainings on Saturdays, but for tomorrow's case, we'll not be doing the practical part of it. We'll be doing, uh, we'll still do online because I realize there is quite some a lot of information we need to cover for the theory part, so we need to hurry up. So today's session will be three sessions of 30 minutes each. So yes, get prepared for the same. So we need to tell you early. So we'll begin with a 30 minute session to end at uh, 11.30. Then we have a 15 minute break. From, uh, from there, you just re-click the link. Then you join again at resume at 11.45. Then we take another another break at 12 of 20 for 15 minutes or 10 minutes, then we begin again. So I hope you're ready for the one hour 30 minute session. So uh, the exam will cover uh, camera 20% theory, not no 20 40% theory. Then there will be 60% uh, configuration considering uh, it's a technical core training you will need to know the the the, the actual working principle and uh, configuration for for the products so you, you all know you need to know how to do connection installation configuration and troubleshooting so at the end when you pass the exam pass mark is 60 so when you pass the exam you get certified so we'll, uh, we, I think we'll provide an avenue for you guys to, to in case you, uh, you need to do a redo exam uh, even at other times, we'll provide with you, we'll facilitate that for you to pass. Okay, then now we can, uh, we can begin on recorder. We have handled before basic training. So for the camera section part of it, we have complete, we are complete with that. So for those of us who joined us on uh, Saturday, we are able to do the recorder part of it, so they are a bit ahead of the same. And also did a practical part of a recorder. So today we're going to do the, the recorder section. Okay. So we did uh, this section here. So let me highlight it. So we have covered this part of it, this this part uh, of the of the training. Now we are at this part where this the NVR part of it and the recorders. So the recorders entails uh, NVRs, EVS, and uh, DVR. 
So an NVR is a network video recorder, and EVS is an embedded video storage. DVR is a digital video recorder. So difference, DVR works with the analog cameras, while well, NVR works with the IP cameras. So we also have, so the, the categories for the DVR include DVR, XCVR, and XVR. So a modern one is the XVR for the analog part of which we can also do, apart from doing the analog cameras, you can connect your IP cameras to the, to the XVR. So an EVS is an uh, embedded video storage. So typically application for EVS will be to use in a situations where you need to have a high storage. You need to maintain a record for the, for the same. So why, why in the cases where you need help to recordings of videos of for longer distance. So EVS is will have a uh, hard disk slots where you have you have capacity even to up to 80, 84, 96 hard disks. You can check that on our website. So um the the recorder working principle is that uh for the for the analog camera, since the camera uh Outputs an analog signal. We need to do a conversion from uh, analog to digital. Then you have to do encoding, then proceed to storage. Whereas for the IP camera, since we are receiving a, a digital signal, what what the uh, NVR will do will just do recording. So, so how that's how for the functionality part, that's how we differentiate between an analog for an um, NVR. Or a DVR. So the working principle in detail is the that uh, for the analog uh, camera for the DVR you have the analog camera at the front end. Then there is encoding. Then there is recording. So basically, this is the information that I've summarized here is into detail is here. So some DVR support connect with network cameras, supports decoding. So, so the, that is the XVR. The XVR, which I've mentioned before, is the ones that can support even IP cameras, not limited to analog cameras. Uh, NVR working principle. So for NVR, uh, you just connect the network cameras, which we said is the IP cameras. So the function for the NVR will just do recording, recording transmission function. So the, the encoding case uh, will refer to, to conversion from uh, analog to digital. Since the cam uh, IP camera re has an output for digital signal, there's no need to do encoding. That's why NVR does not support encoding and, uh, and cannot connect to analog cameras. So maybe you can consider at times, at times uh, you have clients where they have a uh, old system Maybe you want to integrate IP system. What you can opt for is an XVR because it can support both the analog cameras and the IP cameras. So another advantage of uh, XVR would be we are not only limited to uh, analog cameras. You remember when we were talking about cameras, we did uh, talk about different types of analog cameras. So you have the analog analog cameras, and you have the analog modern cameras that support high resolution, even up to 4K. So the, the 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 advantage of XVR will be that case. Also, the, but the the disadvantage of XVR for the cases where you need to do high intelligence and uh, you need to do a bit more of processing of information for AI, you. Uh, going to do about the coding, coding knowledge. So in case there's a, there's a, there's a question, you can uh, put it in the chat section. If there's something that's not clear, you can also confirm that. You can ask at the chat section. 
So uh, how the NVR or the recorder receives information? There's a there's a method for the scanning model. So uh, a scanning model refers to how the images that that is the video has been taken into the system. So we have different types of scanning model, progressive and interlaced scanning. So uh, basically, a video is a is a series of pictures that are shown very fast on your side. That's why we call it frame frame rates. If we if we say thirty fps or twenty five fps means twenty five pictures per second. That's the frame frame rates per second. Twenty five pictures that are per second uh, that are being shown on your on your that are being shown to you to give the impression of video, while it's just a continuous series of images shown very fast. So. How 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 are those images shown very fast to you? So we have in progressive scanning or interlaced scanning. So progressive scanning is a method of scanning. Maybe for those twenty five pictures, you'll be shown each frame in sequence. So you got frame one, frame two, frame frame three. So that sequence. Well, uh, in interlaced scanning, you do odd lines, then even lines for each frame. So meaning you can begin with frame one. Three, seven, up to twenty-five, like in the order numbers. Then go back to to frame two, the even even part of the frames. So the, there are different there are advantages and disadvantages for each type of scanning method. So in the video field, if one of the many still images are displayed sequentially to create impression of motion, the script yeah, talk about this. Mm. So the scanning, okay, you need to just know about the scanning methods that I, that are used with the recorders. So about the progressive and interlaced scanning. So I hope that is clear. Um, video standard. I think uh, this is uh, when you are setting up an uh, XVR when you are initializing for a recorder. Uh, basically, different methods. The, uh, there are different types of video standards. And the reason why we have different method, uh, types of video standard is uh, of importance because I found some people you do a different standard where it is not required there. So a video standard uh, that we use in Kenya is PAL. The reason why we do use video standard as PAL is because our power frequency is at 50 hertz. So the power frequency that we use in Kenya is at 50 hertz. Well, in other countries we have Different as for different, like in USA, they're using a 60 hertz, in Japan, they're using power frequency of 60 hertz. That's the AC. So, you need to, to ensure your systems all run at PAL. So, advantage is that uh, by default, when uh, when you, you do uh, initialization of device or selecting region, you would uh, select your country and you would have the video format as, as PAL. So well, for those of us who are with us on uh, Saturday, we tried changing uh, the power frequency of, an, of a camera to a different value, like 60 hertz. Well, the recorder was doing a power frequency of 50 hertz. So when we did that with the, with the uh, HD camera, what happened is that the camera went off. So <laughs> you need to, to consider the, the power frequency. Also, in cases where you, you are experiencing flickering and out of step, where you have like the, like the lens in the display, check your uh, the video format setting. It's a very important part while doing installations. So consider that. Okay, um, let your camera video stream. What is a stream? So a stream uh, is basically the output for the camera. So is the compressed image of data used to evaluate data volume in an instant state. So the stream is measured in bit bit rate. So higher resolution, higher frame rate means more data and a greater stream. So the, the stream is the signal that we are receiving from the camera. So if you have higher, 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 Higher stream, meaning you have higher quality, higher frame rate. So there are different type of uh, streams that we receive 
from camera, that is the signal. We have a video stream, audio stream, and a composite stream. So a composite stream is, stream is a com, uh, com it comprises of video and audio. So we also have our devices, uh, you have a HD camera that supports composite stream, meaning you have transmission of video and audio over virtual cable. So an um, IP stream can give more than one video stream in different resolutions. So you you, you, you see when you, are, when you are doing the, for those of us maybe you have experience with the recorders, there is the mainstream and substream. So for mainstream, you'd, you'd configure mainstream to be higher resolution, higher bitrate. With substream is a lower resolution, lower bitrate. So at times you might be experiencing uh, in mobile phone that uh, you're trying to view the video, but it's hanging. So you just switch the stream. So you go to a lower quality and the lower, lower frame rate to, for you to view on a mobile phone. So uh, as much as we're talking about stream, uh, we need to, to put into consideration factors like compression. So at times, you, you are the signal from there is uh, quite large. So we need to, to do a compression for that signal and uh, get the optimum or uh, as much as we are trying to reduce the, the, the size of that stream, we still retain quality. So we have different types of compression that uh, our products employ. We have uh, H265, we have, we have H264, we have even AI coding. So our latest type of compression that we try to, do, to, to, to handle the signal from the cameras, the recorder, we have uh, AI coding, which is not mentioned in this, uh, in this training. So the coding technology, we have H265 and H264. So stream control technology, we have two CBR and VBR. We'll talk more of into this as we progress about this. So um, H.264 compression is a, is, a, is a type of compression which considers the former and latter pictures into consideration. That is the frame number one and the frame number 25. In between those frame number one and maybe frame 25, if you are doing a, a 25 FPS, what the, uh, the system will, will do to compress will only uh, consider the sides that are moving. So for this case, if we uh, take this example, the screen. Uh, this example on the screen from the first picture here, you would see that the um, uh, the compression the compression uh, technology will check the whole picture. In the next frame, what it will do, it will realize that the the house is not moving, so it will not. Uh, take the signal with the image, rather consider the person moving. So the frame that is retained is there, is the person, well, this house is discarded. Continue, it, it will continue the same. Then at last, it will combine the former and uh, the first and the last frame and the moving parts of each frame in this in the middle part and create the the output result which is compressed signal so what is what is reduced from the signal is the non moving parts so that is clear so if there is a, a small rectangle moves h264 will record the direction distance and the rectangle itself will not be compressed twice yeah so the signal that is transmitted, you can see from the green signal and the not transmitted. So the house is not transmitted, this person transmitted, transmitted. So the moving parts of the signal. I hope that is clear. So that's how H264 works. So video encoding technology. So while 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 we are doing this uh, this compression here transmitting and not, transmit, not, not transmitting signals that are not are not moving or uh, the cost the stagnant uh, frames in the picture you need to know which which type of frame is this which type of frame is this 
So in this case, the iframe is the initial frame. You see this first, first picture here. So this is the iframe. Then the frame that is composed from this case will be the P and the B frame. So the iframe contains full image data. When transmitting the iframe, the stream will be large. When transmitting the P frame and B frame, the stream will be small. So typically, uh, iframe will be located from the first and the last side. So at the last section, it will combine all the frames to create a uh, video impression. So P, P frame is predicted picture and B frame by directional predicted picture. Only all the, all the image information. So this is a bit confusing, but that's a uh, hope that is clear. So another encoding technology apart from H.264 uh, is H.265. So H.265 and H.265 plus. So um, the principle working for, for 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 the compression technology is more of the same. However, when using the H.265 high, high H.265 or H.265 plus, you can see the utilization for the storage is is better. So if you're if you using H.265 plus, well, in the case where you'd use maybe about 100 hard disk with the H.264, you'd only use one hard disk with, is it one or 10? 10 hard disk with the H.265 plus. So the better, the better, the, the higher the compression technology, the better the hard disk utilization. So while doing compression, ensure that you you maybe set to put your settings to high high compression. So these are one of the things that you can do on your side to make utilization of hard disk or have more retaining information apart from maybe doing recording on workshops. So um so the stream control technology. So we're we are we are saying uh, the camera has an output signal. So how do you control that? How do you control that uh, signal from the recorder side? So the recorder can do a constant bit rate or a variable bit rate. So, so the, 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 the advantages are there exist different advantages and disadvantages for each uh, control technology. So typically most of the people do use a uh, constant bit rate. So if you're using a constant bit rate, it's uh, predictable in terms, in terms of calculating the, the storage that you need and also other factors. So it's almost, so if the stream ends or like presenting, then uh, you'll just resume at 11%. So different applications. So if you're using a CBR, the stream will be steady. The picture quality will go down on the video as a lot of dynamic information. So using a VBR, picture quality is good, even if the video has a lot of dynamic information. Disadvantage of VBR, the stream will be large. So meaning high stream, high bit rate, less hard disk utilization. Needs more storage when the video has a lot of dynamic information. So for cases, so e.g. for indoor scenes, due to less moving objects, configuration stream is too Mbps to meet the requirements. For road monitoring scenarios, due to scene changes, you may need to configure bitrate to 4 Mbps. So if, if you enable a VBR settings on your recorder, you'll be able to configure the, the various parameters for quality and, and the, the bitrate. So next, we're going to do hard disk and read knowledge. So I hope everything is clear from this section from the beginning about uh, introduction, working principle and coding knowledge. We were going to do about storage, storage information and HDD and read. So hard disk introduction. So we have different types of hard disk that we use. We have PC hard disk, these are normal hard disk that you install in a desktop computer. Surveillance, surveillance hard disk, or enterprise hard disk. So PC hard disk will uh, include even the small hard disk. At the moment, the employment of SSD uh, 
with the, with the recorders is not there. So, but the, for the hard disk, we have the big hard disk with the desktop and the small hard disk for computer. So that that's small. The small hard disk would uh, typically be used in uh, scenarios where you are using a recorder that is the MNVR, the mobile network video recorder. So for MNVR, it will use that small small hard disk, while well, these other recorders will use that big hard disk. So for recorders, we consider, we advise you to use the surveillance hard disk because different types of hard disk uh, adapt to different situations. So for cases where you have a PC hard disk, you would use, you would mostly do a lot of reading and a lot of writing. So for surveillance hard disk, you're going to use, to do a lot of writing operations, that is putting information into the hard disk. So less reading. So that's why you should have an hard disk that supports, supports better reading, better writing capacity when doing surveillance hard disk. Enterprises HDD, so it's more of the same about more of the same about surveillance hard disk. However, this one is will use the, the complex systems and high-end devices. So the capacity for hard disk is basically how, what size of information the hard disk can support. So we have different different ones about six, 6 TB, 4 TB, 10 TB. Yeah. Oh, we also have hard disk for Dahua. So Dahua also uh, sells hard disk. So apart from using Seagate and other brands, and use DAWAS because it's optimized for surveillance and for the enterprise cases. So different types of interfaces uh, that the hard disk have. So have IDA, SATA, SAS. So um, I think you can search about this one, but it's not that. Not not a complex information. Basically, how if you if for for the case where you have an hard disk, um, so you see at the at the connection point of the hard disk, we have different interfaces. So we have SATA, SAS, etc. So the the most one that we use is the SATA. Interface. Maybe someone can tell us about the SAS. So, had this comparison, PC surveillance and uh, enterprise. So, a surveillance had uh, power requirement is 2 amperes, and a PC had is 2 greater than 2 amperes. So, if you're, if you're having a recorder like a DVR or XVR that has 12 volts input and 2 amperes, if you take a PC hard disk, most likely, it will damage the, the 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 recorder. If you uh, if you use a surveillance hard disk, it uses less power, meaning the recorder will will uh, will will, will will perform. So hard disk is a very important because at times also we have clients coming that uh, you have installed a hard disk, but the mouse is not working. If you remove the mouse. The hard disk. Uh, if you remove the hard disk, the mouse is working because the hard the type of hard disk uh, you are using cheap, uh, basically affects the system. So go with the, the surveillance hard disk or enterprise hard disk. So for the cases where you have you are using enterprise hard disk, also ensure that you are using uh, power. The power the power that you are supplying meets the requirement. So talk about this one about working more, digging more. Write less, write more, read less. So, because you are recording information, you're going to do a lot of writing, and displaying is less that you'll do a lot of display, fetch information from the HDD. Okay. So, video storage capacity. Um, so for the, for those of us who are not with us, uh, we are in hard disk uh, knowledge. We have just we have done about coding knowledge now in HDD information. So video storage capacity. So basically, this one will help you to do, uh, uh, to, do to, to to predict your storage requirements for the system. So we continue at eleven eleven forty five eleven forty sorry. 
So we're going to have a five minute break. I'm going to end this meeting, then you'll just click the link that we sent. Uh, we resume at 11, 11 for 11.45. So resume at 11. So any question, any concern? Okay, we'll resume at 11.45 for this same. Mm. Just cut a little bit of a 